Jones. Next hour, we have economist, stock market uh, system inventor, BBC news presenter of the program, The Oracle. Max Kaiser joining us for the next hour. We have Alan Watt of CousinTheMatrix.com. Uh, Alan, uh, you know, I've, I've read the big psychologist and psychiatry documents. I've read about the history of eugenics, the New World Order plan. My film, Endgame, Blueprint for Global Enslavement, covers it, so I'm somewhat of a scholar. And I tell you, Alan is just even more of a scholar than I am because he specifically focuses in on that and the system of control. And I wanted to go over some of the current events that are happening right now and see how he sees that playing in to the social controllers and, and what they're trying to set up and do. I have to say, though, Alan, I really see things not going well for the globalists. I, I don't see them as omnipresent and, and, and all-knowing. I do know they understand human nature and study our psychology and our instincts and manipulate us against each other. But I see more and more people waking up to the matrix, waking up that everything they're told is spin or lies. And the, the little mind tricks they play, uh, like I had Psychology Today, two-hour interview yesterday for a big, large cover story in there, uh, and uh, coming out in a few months, and th they were still kind of spouting the old download that there is no New World Order, and it's schizophrenic to think so, while hundreds of publications announce there's a world government, but it's a good thing, and we should all accept it. So I really don't see them hitting on all cylinders and getting all their different flavors of propaganda put out correctly, uh, or is that by design? It's by design. Uh, they start off with the, the fact that the system we are in was set up by their forefathers for this time. We're all in this one boat. We've all arrived here, uh, and it's all through the planning and machinations of previous generations of these big think tanks, foundations, and so on. They have brought us to where they want us to be right now. They are aware, because they, they're constantly taking polls and surveys on the Internet and uh, what you think of this, etc., to see how the majority of people are reacting to the changes. And it's so easy now with the Internet. It's instant communication, data retrieval. They know exactly how the public are. But we always end up, where are we exactly? We're where they put us in the first place. This is the only one system we have, we have been given. And they're updating their system into the next phase. Uh, it's already done, really. It simply hasn't been announced, or we haven't seen the manifestations of the implementations, the total uh, full force implementations of it all. It's all set up for the global system, but it's to be an authoritarian system. And what we will notice, the average person will notice in newspapers and, and in the governments, in fact, they're, they'll be given more, that the old political stance of humoring the public is going out the window, and we're being dictated to by top, generally appointees, not so much the politicians, the green appointees, etc., put there by the big foundations that they're making these uh, dictatorial statements of how we must live, etc., and how we must reduce the population, and so on and so on. This is the changeover from the old idea that we believed in. We were given this big con that we had democracy, and it was always stated from the Fabian Society, eventually it would, be, it would become... Uh, an authoritarian body over the public who would be trained to accept that authoritarian dictate from the leaders. That's the training phase we're going through right now, in fact. That's what's happening. I want to talk about the carbon taxes, the global model, who the New World Order are, what their master plan is, and then go through some of the current things, like Obama, who, whatever he says, it's always the opposite. So now he's going and saying he wants to be friends with the Muslims, they can be assured he's now going to do the opposite. But 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 say he loves them as he ups the troops and the invasions and the wars. Yep. Uh, we'll talk about all of that with uh, Alan Watt, great researcher, great political mind. On the other side of this break, Max Kaiser's coming up. I'm Alex Jones. Our websites are prisonplanet.tv, jonesreport.com, truthnews.us, and whatisthendgame.com. We'll be right back. Stay with us. 
Finally, in the news this evening, it's being reported that cyber spies from Russia and China have now penetrated our power grid. Even as energy experts are reporting that each summer we get closer and closer to the limits of our nation's power grid, some say that this summer's demand for electrical power may finally push the grid over its edge, creating a cascade of power outages across the country, putting us all in the dark. Are you prepared for the next round of storm-related outages or government-created blackouts? Have you ever thought about taking steps to get off the grid and generate your own private supply of electrical power if so this will be the most important information you have ever heard solar powered generators are finally available they have no moving parts to wear out or break and require absolutely no gas whatsoever remember the government doesn't own the sun so go to mysolarbackup.com that's mysolarbackup.com check out mysolarbackup.com before you lose your power Alan Watt, our regular guest, joins us. Alan, we have a lot of new stations picking us up this week. And I want to get into the bigger picture and where the globalists are taking us. You know, when I talk to mainstream media, when they interview me, or when I discuss things uh, you know, with the establishment press, I'm always talking to these reporters, and I think most of them genuinely are ignorant. Just like most Americans you talk to don't even know what the Fourth or Fifth Amendment is, much less the Second or First. And, and it's very, very sad, but everything was set up on eugenics. Everything was set up to carry out a culling of the population. Everything is this highly engineered society. And I don't think a lot of even new listeners or even some longtime listeners understand just how much of our society is engineered and dominated by these people. So, so, so break down in total, in, in your worldview, what the New World Order is, what it stands for, what it's pushing, the phase we're in right now and where it's ultimately leading us in this, quote, final revolution of dehumanization and tyranny. Alan Watt. Yeah, we, we can trace it to say, back uh, in their own books, in fact, in recorded history, allowed history, that which they've published for us to read, right back to the 1700s when um, the elite establishment who already ruled the money system, they'd taken off... See, a group actually were sent in to Europe to take over the money system and become, as Albert Pike said himself in his own book, Morals and Dogma, the masters over the masters of the world. In other words, to create central banking systems that would be all linked together for a global system that might not appear for another 200 years. And everything runs from in a money system from the capstone of money downwards. Laws, government, everything goes cap in hand to the guys with the money at the top. So you can create an entire system structured beneath you, a pyramid beneath you, if you control all of the money and the lending and the borrowing. So it was not too hard to create that kind of system. They also could eradicate all small competition of small money lenders, small banks, and so on, on the way. As long as they were in charge of the money supply for entire countries, they ruled those countries. But along with that, too, was a, a religion. And the religion was based on a natural existing order of elite, intellectual elites, who had already been, been doing the Darwinian experiment of specialized breeding for mates for a long, long time. Uh, Ian Taylor, a scientist in Canada, put an excellent book out on the histories of some of these families, such as Charles Darwin. Charles Darwin was about the fifth generation of Darwins who only married into the Wedgwood family all the wives were taken from the Wedgwood family for five generations. And when Charles Darwin's uh, wife died, he married his mother's sister, a Wedgwood again. And the idea being they were trying to mate up scientifically uh, to create a scientific elite on one hand. This is also uh, validated by Huxley. The Huxleys were also related to the Darwins, and they admitted that that was part of the experiment to create a guardian elite along the lines of Plato and his Republic, where they'd be the guardians of the planet, the natural superior Superman type with virtue, uh, intelligence, common sense, who would rule all the lesser peoples in a standing order all the way down. And on the way, they also needed other organizations that would help them implement a new system and hold it that's why they introduced first Rosicrucianism, then Freemasonry. That was the existing order. Now they've bypassed that. But the same special...
special breeding program that's all through eugenics still goes on. The idea being, if you have a, 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 a woman who's gifted in a scientific area or mathematics, you meet them up with a similar type of male, you see. But they must have other qualities, too, that have passed on for generations that can be validated in a check before they're mated together. Now, if you grow up in Europe and you study the elite families, you'll notice that none of them ever pick their own wives. They have teams of people who literally go through the genealogies for potential mates and match them up. That's how Prince Charles was matched up with Lady Diana. It's arranged marriages just like uh, with cattle breeding. Exactly. And in fact, uh, when the American Eugenics Society came out full force backed by the Carnegie first and then the Rockefeller Foundation that mandated uh, enforced sterilization for inferior types, they said they could not bring inferior types into this future. That means anyone with hereditary illnesses of any kind, physical or mental. And they put out, uh, uh, they set up the Cold Springs Harbor, New York there, plus they brought in the American Cattlemen's Association because they were the best 